And there we go. Look how quickly that goes, guys. That was amazing. What's going on guys? If you want to support our content and pick up this month's amazing Patreon rewards, you can do so at patreon.com slash it resolves. If you're interested in custom playmats and sleeves, visit yourplaymat.com and use code it resolves 10 YP for 10% off your entire purchase. What is going on everybody and welcome back to another standard gameplay video. I hope you guys are having a fantastic start to your weekend. We're going to be jumping into this deck and it's a really, really fun one. But before that, I just want to remind you, please make sure you subscribe to the channel. Not only, of course, are you uh, supporting the channel in a very free and very fun way because you will get notified about all of our videos, but uh, it is also a really good way to enter our giveaway going on right now and any future giveaways. So uh, please make sure you check that out. We are giving away a Kamigawa draft booster box on the 23rd, uh, and it's going to be a really awesome one. So again, encourage you guys to subscribe, but let's talk about this deck. First and foremost, uh, this was brought to my attention by uh, Spinneraptor, uh, who is a mod in our Discord, which I encourage you to check out as well, because that is another way you can enter for giveaways. But uh, Spinneraptor, fantastic deck builder. I don't believe he created this deck, but uh, Spinneraptor, if you happen to be watching this, feel free to correct me down below and link if you did uh, find this elsewhere, because I want to make sure we're crediting whoever you know originally created this list. That being said, this is a very, very fun one. It's Naya Rune Storm. So the idea is between Runeforge Champion as well as the new Naturalist, both of these are going to cheapen up the cost of all of our runes to basically free. Uh, and by basically free, I mean literally free. <laughs> uh, so we can pay, if we have the Runeforge Champion out, this allows us to pay one mana instead of paying the cost for the runes. Uh, and then this reduces the cost of all enchantments by one, which means that these are literally free. Now, what do we do with that? Well, there's a couple of different things. First and foremost, we've got our generous visitor. So we're going to be able to throw, theoretically, as many 1-1 counters out as we'd like. Additionally, we've got things like Hollowed Haunting, so we can get a bunch of creatures out at one time that all buff each other. Uh, now, on top of that, we also have things like Katilda. This is going to get more and more powerful as we get more enchantments out. Now, these each draw us a card as well as have some kind of other effect. Uh, which makes them just extraordinarily good and they're going to continuously refill our hands so we can keep playing things like showdown of the skulls to to again continuously refill our hand or things like spirited companion just to get another creature out there so we can draw another card all of this is really built around that combo now it doesn't have to have that combo the 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 free combo to make this deck work this is actually just a powerful deck i think in its own right but all that to say it's going to be really cool if we can pull that off so i'm hoping we get the opportunity to see what it can do we're going to send this through a few games here hopefully they're pretty fast we might be able to get a couple extra in here but regardless it's going to be a great great time so again thank you to spinner raptor for bringing this deck to my attention if you did find it elsewhere please feel free to link the creator down below but this is going to be a good one guys let's see what we can do all right guys and here we are for game number one this is not necessarily the best hand however we do have the generous visitor into the rune of might we can't play it turn one is kind of the problem uh but you know what we're gonna try it we're gonna see if we can do this i don't have high hopes but we'll see what we can do we'll lead on that veil um this is gonna be i think a tricky one it looks like we're gonna be against a burn style deck uh which is not good for us but we'll see what we can do uh, let's throw this out for white. We definitely want to get that going. And then we'll go ahead and play that generous visitor. Chances are this doesn't stick, is my guess. Um, okay, giant stack, I assume. Uh, this is a good... Uh, that's a better thing than what we could have gotten uh, hit with this turn. So I'm okay with that. Uh, let's go ahead. Let's throw this out for an additional white. Again, we do need to keep the white on the, uh, the field as best we can. And I'm a little worried about what they could have here. Um, I'm going to go for the second visitor. This may not be the best play in the world, but the reality is if they have multiple burn spells, we're going to lose these anyway. And I think in, a, in uh, the situation where they're leaving up a red, they're definitely leaving up a burn spell in, in the hopes of probably just burning out one of these guys, which I don't really love. So... <laughs> We're going to do this. We're going to throw a counter here. Uh, we're definitely just going to stack up as best we can on the single one. 
Uh, the reason we do that is so we can get out of range of the burn is the hope. Uh, deals two damage on the battlefield or is in your graveyard. Hmm. I don't like that we can't gain life, so I'm going to offer the trade here. It looks like they're not willing to take it, though, which is kind of interesting. Uh, what they what this does is shut down our life gain. So what that means long term is that the white rune for us or the uh, Katilda is really not as much of a premium for us as it could be. Now, we really need an untapped land here because if we can get that hollowed haunting down, we can really start to go crazy. They've got the squash to deal with the generous visitor. That's very unfortunate for us. I think we just take the five. The good news is this can get out of hand very quickly, but unfortunately, we're just not drawing what we need to draw here. And that's causing us some issues. So let's throw the counter here, of course. Uh, there's the land. Land is good, um, but unfortunately, it's not going to be enough. I will attack in here. Um, they're going to deal two. Hopefully they can't deal 11 to us this turn. They very well could, but uh, the reality is I think this is just our best bet. We need to keep the pressure on them. And this can get out of hand, like we said, very quickly if we get enough of the uh, enchantments down. Unfortunately, we've drawn almost every four drop enchantment we could draw while only having three lands. And so this is kind of just a rough start for us. That's okay. All right, they've got the Prismari command. That pretty much solidifies the win, I would assume, for them. Um, now, we could draw something, but I really doubt we're going to get anything too spectacular here. Yeah, it doesn't look like it. Uh, so, we'll play this. Just in case they have a Jawari Disruption or something like that, it's worth it to keep that up. But here, they just get to attack in and win. That was a pretty quick game, unfortunately. Just didn't have it. Uh, nowhere in there did we have it, I don't think. So, let's jump into a game two. All right, guys, here we are for game number two. And this is actually a much stronger hand for us, so we definitely can keep this. Uh, hopefully we can get this naturalist down pretty quickly as well and that's really gonna help cheapen things up for us be able to double up on some spells every turn uh, and that's exactly what we want here now the only trick is we can't actually get this down turn two uh, which is a little annoying but again we might be able to uh, to figure something out here looks like the vampires list is what we are going to be against today uh, let's drop this down and we'll just pass here. We're not going to be uh, trading this off. I want to keep that visitor around as best we can. Now, chances are they've got a removal spell, of course, here at some point, and that's fine. But we are going to try and uh, get some counters thrown on some things here if we can do that. Uh, now, again, we're kind of in a weird position mana-wise, but that actually helps quite a bit. So what we can do is throw this out for green. We get to play that naturalist gonna throw a counter on our visitor we'll see if they kill it in response i would think now is kind of the time uh or they can try and kill the naturalist both of which are good options of course but uh perfect all right so what we'll do is we'll throw this here i'm gonna just throw this uh keep throwing the uh, counters on the visitor uh and then again we just get to draw a card here which is helpful that's very very good for us okay so we will go ahead and attack in here again I am sure they have got a removal spell, so I know we're we're kind of going all in on the visitor play at this moment, but what we're doing is making their decision a lot more difficult. Do they kill the naturalist or do they kill the visitor? Both of which are good options for them to kill, but it's a little bit tricky for them to make that call, I would think. And so uh, we're going to see what we can do to make that even harder. I'm going to keep pushing them here. The nice thing is now this has trample and lifelink. We got another naturalist. That's hilarious. Uh, let's go ahead and play this out. It's going to draw us an extra card, which is helpful. Um, I think we start throwing some counters here. I just think that might be the right play. Ooh, Katilda's very good. Okay. And then I think we'll just throw another one here. Now we've got a couple of really good threats. And there we go. Look how quickly that goes, guys. That was amazing. That was a, exactly what we were hoping to do in the first game. We just really didn't have the mana. So that was perfect. Let's jump into a game three. All right, guys, here we are for game number three. And unfortunately, while this does have all the lands we need, we have got absolutely no action spells. And the problem in this meta that I have found at least is if you don't at least have a creature or one or two creatures, really, it becomes a big problem because you just don't have enough to keep things moving. I think what we'll do is we'll keep one of the visitors. Both are very, very good, of course, but I kind of want to do the one into two play and then have that rune of speed available to us. So I think that this makes more sense. Uh, let's keep this one for the white source. Again, 
something to keep in mind here double white is very important to us because we have got the hollowed haunting and so we want to make sure that we've got that available we also have katilda in the list we've got quite a number of double white spells so keeping this plus this and then having this for red is very important looks like they're going to go ahead and vanishing verse right away which is perfectly reasonable honestly i get it uh but we do have that naturalist to follow it up and while we don't necessarily get to throw counters around now we at least have a backup so if they do have another removal spell we'll get that out of hand now and uh hopefully <laughs> hopefully it sticks but we'll see looks like wedding announcement is the play that's perfect we can work around that all right so first things first i think we're gonna throw a counter here uh or excuse me a rune here that's good we've also oh that's very good actually uh all right so we'll throw this out for red i'm gonna keep this going for the time being um we, we draw through our deck quite quickly with this, and that's really an important key here. Uh, we get in for four, we gain four in the process, and now no matter what, even if they kill the Naturalist, we've got the Showdown of the Skulls next turn. It looks like they may not be able to do it, so we should be able to get in for another attack here, uh, which is hugely, hugely powerful. Okay, they do have the Necrotic Fumes, very good on the opponent's end. Uh, interesting so we can kill an enchantment they control which would obviously be this um let's see what we want to do i think we do play the sundown pass regardless uh interesting hmm do we play this or do we play this i'm gonna go for the showdown here we know that they've got the necrotic fumes going and we can actually kill that at any time so i'm not as worried about it here um Hmm. It already has lifelink, so we'd just be doing this to draw a card. I think we just attack in. If they want to triple block it, cool. Uh, that's perfectly fine. Or double block it, I suppose. They don't necessarily have to triple block. The nice thing here is this does have trample, so it still gets through for some damage. And yeah, sure, they get their treasure token, but uh, we're in a position next turn where we can start to really go crazy. Uh, they're obviously going to Necrotic Fumes, if I had to guess, uh, which is going to take up their entire turn, and then we've got Runeforge Champion coming down. Yeah, they get to kill these, but we actually get to bring some of these back with the Champion. The really important thing to note is that the Champion does bring a rune into your hand, uh, and depending on what you can, you can pick where you want it to come from, which is kind of sick. Um, <laughs> so let's do this. What we'll do is we'll go for the graveyard and we'll search for that rune of speed now we can play this just for one of any color uh so we'll go ahead and throw that there it's gonna get a counter and it's gonna draw us a card fantastic and then i think we'll just go ahead and play this for white and play this again just giving us that lifelink this is good but it's not really gonna outpace us on the damage end of things now we're drawing quite a bit of land not exactly what we want i would love like a hollowed haunting um however you know we'll figure it out we've got a, a grip full of lands here worst case scenario we can ditch this and that is unfortunate they did have the answer with that vanishing verse but again there's not much we can do about it we just have to kind of push through as best we can and i think we might uh depending on what we draw here just kind of wreck the the wedding festivity wow land on top of land that is very unfortunate look at all these in the hand here <laughs> that's very frustrating but again there's not much you can do about it you just have to push through as best you can and uh it's fine you know it is what it is they get a land here that's cool all right let's see if we can get there guys if we get what do we need here that's kind of the big question truthfully a showdown would probably be the best wow okay well that was great let's see what we can draw off the showdown here katilda is quite good uh let's make sure we play the lands here because we might as well and we'll go ahead and play the katilda uh kind of unfortunate that we know they're a vanishing verse deck because it does exile katilda so we have to hope that they don't have it here thankfully we've gained some life to kind of pad our life total as well um, a little worried about what they're going to get off of the Professor. If they've got another Necrotic Fumes, that is going to be a problem for us, and it looks like they do. Uh, thankfully, they can't quite play it this turn. We could block, uh, which would give them the ability to do that. We're not going to if they attack with the uh, Shambling Gas. Yep, 
we're just gonna take the three not interested in killing this off so that way they can just go ahead and play it that's not good for us um all right let's go ahead and play the rune it's gonna throw a counter on this it's gonna get very very strong very quickly uh lifelink is already on it uh what do we want truthfully the trampling uh rune would be really good and i know we're investing quite a bit in this but i think it's just the right play for us at the moment let's go ahead and drop this down we're gonna gain another uh card off of this which is quite good and there's the naturalist so we can play this out we can play that naturalist and now again we're just trying to set ourselves up for the best possible turn this upcoming turn so we do get a good solid attack in however they can just block it uh freely essentially we do gain 11 life in the process though so again we're we're keeping ourselves in here uh as best we can truthfully now a hollowed haunting would be tremendous we can drop the hollowed haunting then drop the rune of speed and then have availability to do kind of whatever we need to do this is a problem though they can exile the katilda so that's going to get rid of it and then now they still have the necrotic fumes which they can use on the naturalist if they see fit um really anything and they have got a lot of counters on stuff here yeah it looks like they are going to take care of the naturalist here that makes a lot of sense i'm with it they're going to get an attack in here for four pretty solid uh all right so i think we definitely play the companion we're going to get a counter on our own little companion by doing this, which is nice. Oh, man, we are just drawing all the lands. Very unfortunate. Uh, there's not a lot we can do about that, sadly. Um, I think we'll throw the counter here. I don't think it matters too much. Oh, my goodness. Guys, we are really not hitting very lucky here. <laughs> That's very unfortunate. I think we just have to pass. The problem is they can just block here. Uh, and then kill this one in the process. So that's an easy two for one for them. Not interested in taking that. I'd rather take the damage and then be able to attack back. But wow, what a sad series of draws. Look at all of the lands. Just, just terrible. Not much we can do about it. I mean, again, this is one of those things I know a lot of people get frustrated and it is frustrating. Let me be very clear. This is very frustrating. But something to keep in mind, guys, if you get yourself into a position like this where you're either drawing too many lands or you're not drawing enough lands or whatever it might be, it sucks. And I, I feel for you, man. I really do. But keep in mind, this happens to everybody at some point. There's a luck aspect to this game, and it's not something that you can help. It's just something that is very frustrating. And unfortunately, you just have to go with it. And if it happens, it happens. You know what I mean? Um, so it can be discouraging. I understand but it's just the best thing you can do. <laughs> it's the best thing you can do, uh, unfortunately being tested here quite a bit, uh, to just let it go. And if it happens, great. If it doesn't, it's fine. I think we just concede here, guys. The only thing that would have maybe dug us out of that is a showdown. I don't think we would have gotten it, though. So let's go ahead. We're going to jump into a game four. We've got some time here. Uh, and let's see if we can get another win. All right, guys. Here we are for game number four. Uh, and this is an interesting one, but again, it's a little tricky, right? We don't have the land. We don't really have a turn play. I think we mulligan this. Um, <laughs> man. All right. Well, we do have the land, so I think we go this route and hope for the best here. This is not ideal. Uh, the Runeforge champion is very good in the opening hand, but you really want to have like a generous visitor or something that you can play uh, early game. And unfortunately, we just don't. I'm gonna go ahead and play the farmland here as well. There's no reason not to. Okay. Uh, we do get to hold on to the Besiju, or whatever it is, uh, which is good. But here, I'm assuming that they're gonna be able to kill something uh, or kill the uh, Runeforge champion here. We'll search our deck. Uh, let's pull, I think this one. The Rune of Speed is a very crucial one for us because it does give haste, so we can be fairly aggressive with it. Uh, but we really don't have it here to uh, to need it. So I think it's worth it. We've already got it also, but I just don't think we need it. Not to double up, at least. Interesting. Okay, so a Circuit Mender enters the battlefield. You gain two life. When it leaves the battlefield, you draw a card. Fascinating. Okay. Well, um, I'm going to set up, I think, here a little bit. Yeah, we're going to go for that Hollowed Haunting. While they are tapped out, 
we know that we can get it down here not that we expect obviously they're not going to have a counter but it does give us some really good abilities here and worth noting this can enchant uh any permanent it can be a land and so now if we enchant a land we still get a creature out of it and then the next one can actually hit the creature so this really really just shores up the longevity of the game i'm gonna not block i assume that they've got a kill spell here but just in case i'm gonna let it come through all right interesting um okay well here is the fun part i suppose now the question is how are we gonna do this i'm gonna go here first let's drop that katilda let's see if they want to try and kill this um kind of curious about that Tilda is a very very good card and I am going to go ahead and play the haste on here it's going to give us a creature of course but more importantly it's going to haste this up so they can actually and now again worth noting even if they kill the Katilda at this point we still get the uh the creature off of the hollow taunting and that's kind of the key here is that no matter what we've at least got plays uh and that's pretty important so we can attack in um I don't really care to we're not really at a point where we need to uh i don't think this is an interesting include by the way uh was for two damage so this obviously is an artifact deck um so they're probably just gonna kill the one one yeah they're gonna draw a couple cards here i'm really interested in this deck and seeing what they can actually do here this circuit mender is an odd odd include um, it's just not something we've seen very often. Now, they draw a card if it leaves the battlefield, so it is a very good card to have, I imagine. Um, they can deadly dispute it. Um, again, I'm not really wor I I'm not in the camp of risking the, the Runeforge champion, so I'm not really interested in blocking. We can take two. That's fine. All right. So the downside here is they do have quite a bit of mana available. Um, and I don't love that, but I think we just go for this. Regardless of what happens, we are going to get the uh, the creature here. So if they kill this in response, that's fine. All right, we get to draw a card here. Another rune. Um, interesting. I'm going to go ahead and throw the haste on here. Um, We'll see if they kill this in response. Looks like still not going to. That's really fascinating. All right. If we get a naturalist, we are golden. We can drop the naturalist and then these are free, <laughs> uh, which is kind of sick. Um, let's drop this here. Again, can still pull the naturalist. Looks like they might kill this now really interesting that they're deciding to do it at this point um but that's fine and then let's go ahead and throw this here uh and draw a card cool so we'll get an attack in for five here we're gonna gain ourselves back all of that life that we have lost plus one and now at this point even if they've got like a bunch of point and shoot removal spells like they seem to have we can just drop a katilda on one of these guys and we're in great shape um so i'm feeling okay now, worth noting, they do have a Hive of the Eye Tyrant, so that is something that they could exile the Katilda down for. Oh, very good. Okay. Unfortunate for sure. We did expect a Meat Hook Massacre at some point, so that's not super surprising. Uh, but let's go ahead and play the Naturalist. We're going to get another token. This is kind of the important part about this deck is we can kind of rebuild fairly quickly here. I'm going to go here. Um, again, just to give ourselves, like, they could kill the Naturalist or they could kill the 7-7, both of which are very good options, but, um, kind of curious to see what they hit. I also just want to get that Hive, or, or the Katilda out of the graveyard before they get to activate that Hive of the Eye Tyrant. That's not something we can really risk, uh, hitting ourselves with, so let's make sure we get that done. Even if they kill this, at least we got to shoot for it. Again, land seems to be a commonality here. <laughs> uh, okay. I'm assuming they can kill something here, but we are going to attack in with this. It's going to deal seven. We gain seven. I would have thought if they had a removal spell, they would have used it. Um, so unless they draw it here or off of the bank buster, we might be okay. Uh, but we'll see. 
We could have also attacked with this 2-2, but uh, I didn't really feel the need. This is kind of an interesting deck because it's obviously a Rakdos kind of removal heavy deck, and that's really interesting, but I don't know. The synergies here seem slightly off, as in I just don't know where all of it's kind of heading, if that makes sense. Okay, uh, cool. So we're actually going to peg this here. Uh, this is going to draw us a card, which is great. But crucially, this is now like a good solid threat that we can start attacking with as well. There's a naturalist. Let's go ahead and play that. And there we go, guys. We got the win. That was fantastic. Uh, that was a bit of a tricky game, but let's let's talk about this deck really, really quickly. All right, so first and foremost, again, I want to thank Spinneraptor for sharing this with me. Again, a fantastic mod. Go thank him in uh, in the Discord for actually making a lot of what we do possible. But fantastic deck. Uh, really enjoyed this one. It was a bit odd. I think um, the, the lands were a slight issue. And I don't know if that's down to the deck building or if that's down to the shuffler because it seemed to happen more than once. However... Uh, I don't really think this had too many lands, you know, I, I'm I'm a little curious on that. But regardless, the deck worked pretty well. We never got to the point where we were playing them for free, the runes for free. However, you can see still just how discounting them, being able to continuously play things, draw more cards, and really in that last game with the Hollowed Haunt and getting all those creatures just allows you to rebuild so quickly. Uh, and in general, I think this deck was fantastic. I really enjoyed it. I love the runes deck. We've had it for quite a while since Kaldheim, obviously, uh, in standard. But here, I think we really have the ability to go crazy with it. So it's finally kind of hitting its stride, I think. Do I think it's tier one? Probably not, but it is still very, very fun. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this one. If you did, leave a like, leave a comment down below. Make sure you subscribe and also check out that giveaway. We do have an article uh, over on our website at resolvesmtg.com. We also have a video on our uh, homepage here on YouTube if you'd like to check that out. But guys, I love you all. Thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. We'll see you again very soon.